Hey, I'm Terence Espinosa. This video will go over the tools we need for translating the Greek New Testament for our class. Uh, just a basic uh, discussion of how to use an interlinear, how to use a parallel, and how to use live click in Accordance 13. I'm using Accordance 13 on a, a PC running Windows 10. Uh, Mac will have a, a slightly different look to it. The functionality is the same. You might need to have a different shortcut or hit Apple rather than Control or a slightly different way. There might be another option um, for quick links. Anyway, Mac, the, the function's the same. It might look a little different, but um, we can figure that out. So let's talk about Greek, the Greek New Testament. Uh, so I'm going to, what I normally do is use the search bar and I'll type in Greek New Testament. So mine is uh, it's called G and Greek NT tag. That's what Accordance calls it. It's their analog for you know, um, Nestle Elan. And so the commentary is here. If I want to look at Tyndale commentaries, that's great. You can do that, uh, but I don't have to. I don't necessarily look at it. Now we're doing translation, not necessarily study. And Tyndale doesn't often give good translation resources. Now, uh, a word commentary does uh, does give a lot of good resources to, um, let's see here, does give linguistic resources. So if I were translating Matthew and I had a word commentary, I might open that because there's a, there's a section in Word that specifically is, uh, details the discussion of translation and, and why they went the way they did. So uh, for, for now, I'm going to close commentaries, but in further study, if you had Word or another useful commentary, you might open that up. NetBible Notes are also usually very good about that as well. So open up your Greek Bibles and let's go to Matthew 1. All right, beginning Matthew 1.1. 1, 1. And we want to set up our interlinear. So we're going to talk about interlinear, parallels, and live click. So interlinear is first. Interlinear is going to be, uh, well, here on the screen, on a PC. It's next to the resizing icon. It's in the top left corner of the tab for my Greek New Testament. And so I want to show the interlinear. And this is the same as before with Hebrew. If you watch the Hebrew video, oh, I don't need the key. The key number is going to be your Strong's number or probably here Goodrich Kohlenberger number. But that's for if you don't know Greek. We can read Greek, so we I would ignore that for now. Um, the lexical form. The lexical form is the form of the word in, let me make this bigger for you, is the form of the word in the dictionary, in the lexicon. So for example, um, so Abraham, Abraham. It's the same in the dictionary, but this word here, egnason, egnason, uh, that's a fully parsed, uh, fully inflected form of Hebrew, of Greek, excuse me. Uh, and that's not what the dictionary form is. If you look up in dictionary, you won't find it probably. The dictionary form is genao. And the verbs in particular, that can be tricky. So having the lexical uh, part, the lexicon section of your interlinear open is very helpful when this happens, because it happens quite a bit in both Hebrew and Greek. The so dictionary form is another way of saying lex. So I think Lex Luther, dictionary, dictionary form, lexical form. That's what that row is all about. Uh, part of speech should be on as well. Part of speech tells us whether it's a noun or a verb or conjunction or article or article means the, uh, or whatever. Um, in, in Hebrew means the, in Greek it means the as well. Uh, so part of speech is the basic part of speech uh, to which the word belongs. And then the tag, that's the, the rest of the parsing information whether uh, nouns are masculine or singular, whether they're nominative, genitive, dative, or accusative, vocative, whatever it is, those are details that you need. So for part of speech and tag, that information is useful for translation for the homework I'm giving in our courses uh, where we ask you for information. So this is a great way to get that um, there for you. Back in the before days, uh, way back when I was a student, there were whole books you'd buy with the information like this. And it would just be a separate volume on the verbs of the Bible or the nouns of the Bible or the words of the Bible fully parsed. Now it's here in accordance, which is very nice. Very nice for us now. Uh, so there's that. What else is, needs to be on our interlinear? Ah, gloss. So gloss is your very quick first pass translation of a word. As always, uh, the words don't always have a one-to-one -one, uh, correlation in English or correspondence to an English word. So go with the gloss in the beginning, but then you're going to have to go through and maybe cover it one or two more times before you uh, settle on your final translation based on the context of the passage and what it's trying to convey. Uh, so here, Matthew 1 is fairly straightforward. It's about who begot who. So we might say this was the father of so-and-so, or this begot so-and-so, or this was whatever. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a genealogy. So it's a pretty standard formulaic way to translate it. But still, your glosses are helpful. 
but they're not going to be your final definition all the time. Just be aware of that. So that's your interlinear. As before, you want to add a parallel. If you want to see an English or whatever language you read, uh, you can find that text here. So you go to add parallel, click on add parallel. Uh, you can find a commentary, that's fine. Um, you can find, well, I want, I'm gonna go to NIV, but I want to go the longer way. So showing you all these biblical texts. Um, NIV, there we are. Interesting. So Matthew 1 1, Biblos, record, or let's see, look at here the glosses scroll, book, or record. Uh, genealogy proper is what's happening here. And because of what follows, it's clear this is not just a book, this is a genealogical record. So uh, genealogy is the proper translation of uh, Geneseos here. Even though your gloss doesn't have that, the proper translation is genealogy. And that's that should be, let's see if. ESV has the same. I'll go the long way around for ESV as well. Look at that. This is the genealogy or the book of the genealogy. Either way. So again, this illustrates why even if you have this interlinear with the parts of speech and you have some glosses, that still isn't translation. That's part of translation. But then you want to go over the bigger context and figure out the, the best way to convey what's being said in the original language into your target language. And even there, there are options, but uh, these tools will help you. So let's close this one up. So when you're translating a Greek uh, assignment for us in a class where, um, where we're not in a full-blown Greek class, but we're in a more of a crash course style course, so you just wanna learn how to use the tools better, uh, you open up your, your interlinear. So show interlinear, have the lex, part of speech, tag and gloss, um, attributes, uh, checked and that will help you with information you need for um, for translation you can also have one or more bibles opened to, to compare and contrast you can do this early on when you're translating greek but i'd recommend you close this and the first pass through i want you to try and translate on your own so read the greek you can read slowly that's fine uh, there's even if you want help with that um, lexical transliteration word transliteration. Okay, so the lexical translation gives you the dictionary form translation, but we want the word transliteration. So if you, if you thought it was Biblos but wanted to check, this word transliteration will tell you in English how to pronounce the word as it appears in the Bible. So again, Eseos, good. Yesu, Christu, Christu, Huiu, Dawid, or David, Dawid, um, Huiu, Abraham. Okay, so there you are. So if you want help with your pronunciation, there is a word transliteration part of interlinear, which will help you. At some point you won't need it and that's okay, but know that it's there. And then once you've gone through your verse or verses and translated, then open up your parallel and look in whatever Bible you wanna read and, and really add a few Bibles to double check. So that was again, showing the interlinear and how to find a parallel to help you with your translation. Uh, and that's great. This is this is what you need. Now there is one more thing to show you. It's live click, and so let me close everything and open it up again, just freshly. So I'm gonna close the commentaries. Although this is useful if I wanted to see something from the commentary. Okay, we'll close it up. Uh, I like this font size, but for our purposes, we'll make it bigger. Um, wow, that's probably okay. Now live click. We want to live click and live click means when you triple click a word, uh, let's go with Biblos. Huh, that was a little different than before. Let me try one more time. Live link is clicked, Biblos is clicked. There we go, okay, I triple clicked it. The first box should give you a list of lexical entries. These are snippet views, just a few lines from the lexicons that you have on your accordance. So Thayer, Loni, it rearranges the order. That's fine. So you can look and see which concordance you want to use. I would use Loanida. Mounts is a good beginner lexicon. Uh, trench, no, not trench. Um, where'd you go? Thayer. There, oh, the first one. 
that's a fun, there are some issues with there, um, but that's fine as well. Um, but that's that's a snippet view, and you could expand and uh, open the entire resource if you wanted to. So that's the top box. The next box down here will find all the places where this word is used. Now, there's an issue, not an issue, an option here. I have it set to where it looks up all the places where the word Biblos is going to be used in the entire New Testament. Now, it's just 10 verses, 10 hits, so one time per verse. Matthew, Mark, Luke, Luke again, Acts, a bunch of Acts. Um, is this Philippians? Uh, yeah, uh, Revelation. Okay. So that's nice. And it even shows us, oh, look at that, Septuagint. Fantastic. Okay. And it gives us information, 24 hits and 24 verses in Septuagint. Awesome. So the, um, this is a concordance. A concordance would do this for every word of the Bible and tell you all the places where it's used. And that's a lot of work. You can now do it on accordance if you click live click and triple click a word, a Hebrew or Greek word, which is fantastic. Okay. That's one thing you can do with the live click. Now, if you wanted to change the setting, and just see where that word is used in the book that you're reading, you would go to this one. If you saw the Hebrew video, uh, you saw their issues at first, but I got there. We got there. Uh, you're going to go to settings, so and preferences, right? Edit, preferences, or control, comma. Either one will open up this box here. You're going to go to live click, live click. Uh, it's just a little further than halfway down the list on, on my accordance. And word usage. It's now set to the entire text of the New Testament or Old Testament, depending on which Testament you're reading. Um, but if I wanted to look at just the current book that's opened, so I want to see where Biblos is used in Matthew. So let's, there we are. Um, okay. Well, there you are. So it's all just in Matthew. Uh, so these are three different Greek texts here too. It's only used once in Matthew and it's right there in the very beginning. Uh, GNT Westcott Hort, GNT Texas Receptus. Those it's all the same, same verse, the single verse in Matthew, but there's only one, so they're giving on the screen the other Greek translations that I have. So that's great. This is a concordance function. Let's see. Uh, oh, but Yesu, Jesus. Oh, it's Joshua in the Old Testament. Jesus is used quite a bit more in New Testament. So, 152 times in 149 verses. Look at that, fantastic. And you can scroll through and see all the places where it's used. And that's, oh, that's just in Matthew because of the setting um, that we just left it at. So in Matthew, it's used in 149 verses, 152 times. Let's go and change that back to the entire Bible. Oh, it's thinking about, okay, entire text. So word usage, go for the entire text, click go. And let's close this and give it a chance to reset. Okay. Wow, 917 hits and 878 verses. And you can scroll through. And so this is much more than Matthew. It's the entire New Testament. And you can do that for any word. It's a really useful tool, especially for the word study assignment or just in general. It's a great tool to use. And if there are other ways to get there, but live click to me seems like the easiest way at the moment. So that's it. This video showed you a few things, showed you how to set up your interlinear when you open up a Greek New Testament. It showed you how to set up a parallel when you use your Greek New Testament. And it showed you how to use live click to help you with the definition or usage of words in your Greek New Testament. All right. Well, that's it. Uh, we'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.